All right, YouTube, once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. Auburn is continuing to do their thing on the recruiting trail. Now, 2021 has been a very interesting and intriguing uh, year as far as recruiting for the Auburn Tigers. I think they have a very diverse class, and they're starting to get some of the pieces in place that they need to make some championship runs in the future. Now, what you got to do, well, let me go ahead and uh, do my normal thing. Go ahead and like the video, comment, and subscribe to Vernon Speak Sports Auburn. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle. So the 2021 recruiting class is a culmination of a few previous recruiting classes that have led up to what Auburn is starting to, to develop now, and that's roster uh, quality, depth, things of that nature, where when you know they have the opportunities more so to reload instead of rebuild and that's something that that, that you got to do and, and if you look at Gus Malzahn as a football coach he came from the high school ranks and no matter what anyone says you're not going to have the same mentality um, coming from the high school ranks or even being a, a coordinator especially being a coordinator under coaches who were somewhat unsuccessful as far as uh, consistent recruiting goes you're just not going to know what to do but I think Gus Malzahn and his squad is starting to get it. They're taking their show on the road. They're starting to get, uh, you know, somewhat transcontinental with this thing as far as geographics as to where they get guys from. And I think it's going to pay dividends to the Tigers uh, long term. Uh, so this is a big deal for the Tigers. Auburn has really been lacking at the defensive back position over the past few years. As a matter of fact, for um, in 2018, uh, Auburn got lucky. I told y'all before, got lucky with Noah Igbenogany. Noah Igbenogany wound up being a first round pick uh, to the Miami Dolphins. So it turned out to be a pretty good move for Auburn and Noah. Now, if you look at it this particular season, Auburn is kind of shorthanded at the, the secondary position as well, having to depend on some guys maybe converting over from offense to defense. And those are things, if you talk about winning championships, a lot of fans on this particular channel, Auburn fans feel like Auburn should cons uh, compete for championships every year. Now, I casually disagree based on some of Auburn's recruiting pr practices up until now, but I think Auburn is trying to fix this long term. You're not going to win a national championship or at least your odds of winning the national championship or even making it to the college football playoff is not good if you're converting offensive players over to defense to staff especially a very pivotal position in power five, the cornerback position. So Auburn has recently, uh, as of today, has gained another commitment in the 2021 recruiting class, and they went out to the junior college market in the recruitment of Kamal Haddon. Why am I excited about this? I actually looked at a little film on Kamal Haddon, and one of the things that stands out to me is that Kamal is very – opportunistic now here's what i mean by opportunistic he's looking for a way to get the football back into the offensive offense's hands he's always looking to strip the ball he's always looking to find ways to put, put himself in position to intercept the ball he does not let play he doesn't waste plays he, he cre he's one of those guys that likes to create opportunities uh for the offense to get the football back and that's something that Auburn definitely needs. And that's one of those great equalizers. Let's say you're in a game against, you know, you talk about Auburn versus LSU. And you look at the interception by Roger McQuarrie uh, in, the, in LSU's end zone. Those are the types of plays that keeps you in the football game and gives you an opportunity to win against a team that otherwise probably should have beat you. Auburn had a great opportunity to beat LSU, wound up losing that game 23-20, to but it was because of opportunistic plays like the play on um, Derek Stingley when Derek Stingley was uh, getting ready to uh, field the punt and Auburn forced a fumble there. When I talked about the LSU game before, I said that LSU, I mean, Auburn absolutely had to create opportunities with turnovers. They did everything that I predicted that they needed to do to win that game, wound up playing LSU closer than anybody that whole season, losing that game 23-20, LSU the eventual national champions. Uh, Joe Burrow, eventual Heisman Trophy winner. I think this is a big deal for Auburn. It's starting to solidify the depth in the secondary. Uh, one thing that a lot of folks may be wondering, well, why did this recruit take Auburn from the number 16 
t- ranked team recruiting wise in the nation all the way to, well down to 18. Well, you got to look at this. He was only an 85 percent recruit. OK, that's going to bring you down a little bit. And then you got to factor in other teams who are starting to acquire players as well. So that's where that two uh, that two two ranking loss factored in for the Tigers. All right, guys, this is my time here. We're going to talk some more. Um, there's been a lot of press coming across about the schedules. I think there's some big losers in this schedule, i.e. Arkansas. I don't think Arkansas will win a single game this particular year. We're going to talk about that a little bit later on. Once again, it's Kennard Vernon Stewart here for the podcast. We're talking to Auburn football. Like the video, comment, and subscribe. And as always, it's great to be an Auburn Tiger, War Eagle. <laughs>